Looks lucky. Uh, I always start this talk with a philosophical question. What is life all about? <laughs> and again, when I think of this form of work, I don't really think of it as a therapy. Because in a therapy, you're ill, and then you're going to get cured. And I think that what people are looking for is not to be cured, they're trying to become themselves. So that's another way of looking at this work. So when I say, what is life all about? The answer that I come up with, we're made to be able to be happy in an imperfect world that's endlessly unfolding. And we human beings are the local agents of that unfolding of the cosmos. So then what we really look at is how to participate in that unfolding, not how that we're sick or we have a neurosis, but we're looking for how to do our own personal unfolding and be connected to that cosmological unfolding. So when we say we're made, we're made not to be happy, but to be able to be happy. So we're not made to be permanently happy, but in an imperfect world that's endlessly unfolding. So this is quite different than thinking that we have to have a life of endless happiness, which some people project in heaven now, be endlessly happy. But we're not talking about afterlife. We're going to be able to be happy, not in a perfect world, in an imperfect world. And that has some religious philosophical notion because of that endless unfolding of the cosmos is a spiritual unfolding that you might think that that's God. God is all there is. So there's an image of God here that isn't perfect. And in a lot of spiritual images, there's perfection which we should strive for. But here, we're able to be happy in an imperfect world. So it allows for our imperfection and still being able to be happy and not to look for purity within ourselves. I, I think that that's important. And when I say we're made, we're made out of information. Information. And information that forms us and informs us about life. And there are three kinds of information that form us and inform us about life. The first information is genetic information. And when you think of genetic information, the moment of conception, we inherit genetic information that has known about successful living <coughs> from the beginning of time. You follow that? When we are conceived, and all it is is information, it's an egg and a sperm, but packed in that egg and sperm is information about what makes life go on. So that's genetic information. Let me talk a little bit more about that. Packed into that genetic information are two <coughs> basic impulses, two drives. The survival of the self, so that as soon as we're conceived, before <coughs> we even get a body, there's a push to live. I want to live. And when you have children that just come out, is it just a year now? They come out and they are that stuff with their name attached to it. But that's that genetic information that wants to the survival of the self. But then that stuff knows that life is mortal, that individuals die. So there has to be, in order for life to continue, a second impulse, and that's the survival of the species. Okay. That, and that's the part of the unfolding, to do something that will add to life beyond our lifetime. Okay? And that's at the moment of conception. But that little 
child isn't going to make more life, but first it's conceived and then inside it begins to have a body, it forms a body, and then the child comes out. Okay. But in order for that child to be able to want to make more life and be happy, there's an agenda in our genes, in our genetic stuff, which I call storage. That's the storage that's pushing us. There are five basic tasks that have to be met in order for us to be able to make more life. Of course, the child comes out and is not able to do that, not ready to do that at all. And those basic tasks are having our maturational needs met. So those things that let us mature met at the right age with the right kinship relationship. So there's a timeline when these needs should be met. And the genes know family networks because there's a mother and a father and they had to come from a mother and a father. So there's a grandmother and grandfather. They may have had other children. There's aunts and uncles and they get children and there's cousins. So built in our genes is an awareness of a complete family network. And the reason I'm emphasizing that now, that when there's a hole in that family network, we feel it and we fill it. That's the, so, but I'm not talking about that yet. I'm just highlighting a bit at the moment. So there's a timeline. And when I speak about those maturational needs, they have something that has to do with attachment theory, if you want to think of it in that way. And I'll go into detail about those maturational needs. The other task is integration and unification of polarities. How to become a whole self that includes our imperfection, okay? So that we can be this comprehensive complex with polarities in it. The third is the development of consciousness, meaning, and language. And that's immensely important, and I'll go into that in detail. And the fourth is the development of what I call the pilot, the part of the self that is the CEO of the self that makes decisions implements the decisions and is responsible for them. And then the fifth one is the one I spoke about before, fulfillment of one's personal uniqueness and potentiality.